automatic fields in Word are like adding text to the document that automatically updates itself. You've probably already used some. For example, if you've inserted page numbers, then you will have been using fields. If I insert a page number there in the header, in the centre and click on OK, there's our page number. If I then scroll down to the top of the next page, you can see the page number is 2. It's been automatically updated and that's using a field. You might also have used fields already using headers and footers. If I go into the headers, all these items here on the toolbar are all fields, page numbers, dates, times, and the auto text features. They are all fields. I've just had another one there created by the author of the document, who in this case is Ron Taylor. But how do we know it's a field? What makes it different? If I select the name Ron Taylor, you can see it turns grey. That's what tells us it's a field. And then clicking off the field, the grey disappears. That makes it quite difficult to spot a field in a Word document. So I like to use a feature that turns them so they are switched on all the time. This feature is on the Tools menu and we drop down to Options. Then on the View tab, we have Field Shading at this right hand side. And we've got a drop down menu when selected. I like to have it set as Always. That means the fields show up as grey all the time. So you can see there I've got Ron Taylor and the page number have both got a grey shading to them, denoting them as fields. We'll close the headers and footers and show you that, that there are lots of other fields we can use. They don't have to go into the header, they can go anywhere in the document. For example, if we want to know the size of the document, we can use a field that automatically looks at the size of the document. And we can do that using the Insert menu and then drop down to Field. This brings up the Field dialog box and there are lots of different fields available for us to use. If we want to narrow the search down, we can use the Categories box at the top to find certain types of fields. We're only going to look at a couple of these fields just to see how they work, but I suggest that you spend some time going through these to see what they all do. You'll never use a lot of them, but some of them are really quite useful. For example, here's the author field that we mentioned earlier when we use the header and footer. When we select the field, we often get some options that go alongside it at the right hand side. For example, I can have the author's name in uppercase. I click on OK and there's the author's name. But obviously that's not the field we were looking for. We were looking for document size so I'm just going to delete that and we can just delete it in the normal fashion using the delete key and this time we're going to insert the document size field. So I'm looking for the size. There we are, the file size field. When I select that, look at all these options we can do. We can change the formatting to give it a certain number of decimal places. There's all kinds of different formatting we can use. And we can even add extra options to the field at the right hand side. So if I want the field file size to be in kilobytes, I'll put a tick in the box, click on OK. And there is the size of my document, 35 kilobytes. Fields often need to be updated. Many of them will up update automatically. For example, a date field will automatically update. Some of them you have to do manually, um, especially some that we'll look at in the next lesson, which are to do with calculations. If you need to update a field, then you can right click on the field and choose update. And that will update the field to take care of um, the, the current state of the document. To show you what I mean by that, if we just add some extra text to this document, 
and then save it, then obviously the size of the document will increase. If I then update my field by right clicking on it, it shows the new size of the document. So that's what updating does. Using the right mouse click, we can also edit the field, which basically brings up the field dialog box again, and we can change its options. Obviously, it isn't very uh, large document this, so it's, it's effectively zero megabytes compared to the 35 or 41 kilobytes that we had earlier. Let's have a quick look at some more fields. We've got uh, the date the document was created, and then you can change the display format of that date. That's quite a useful one. There is the edit time, how long the document has been edited for, the file name, lots of different fields that we can use at any time. An interesting one is the fill in field, which you use in combination with a mail merge. If you have a fill in field in your mail merge, then every document that is merged will stop and ask you to fill in the details. So you could put a prompt in there that says, ask a question. And we can have a default response there. So if we don't give an answer, then we've also got always got an answer in. So for example, in a mail merge, it could be um, name of uh, author and the author would always be Ron Taylor. So when we run the mail merge, which we'll look at in later sessions, when we run the mail merge, every new document will pause and ask me to enter the name of the author, and it will automatically put Ron Taylor in unless I tell it to choose to, to type in another name. So that's fields, very often used in the header, or the footer, but can be used anywhere in the document, and it's quite simply insert fields. Looking for the field that you want to use, and dialing up the options in the right hand side. Automatic fields.